Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 47 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. I'm Lewis, your host. Now let's dig in. On Saturday afternoon, Ship 22's aft section was rolled out of high bay after being cut off the bottom of the scrapped starship. That evening, the scrapping continued as Ship 22's mid-lock section was carried out of high bay attached to a crane. Around the same time, the work platform was lowered from the bottom of the orbital launch mount and placed on its transport stand. Just after midnight, crews continued to make quick work dismantling Ship 22 as its forward lock section was removed from high bay. The ship's methane section was next as it left the building after being cut from the bottom of what remained of the ship. In the early hours of Monday morning, the FireX system on the orbital launch mount was briefly tested ahead of a big day of full stack testing. By early afternoon, SpaceX began loading propellant into Booster 7 and Ship 24 in the first ever full stack wet dress rehearsal of Starship program. For wet dress rehearsals, SpaceX follows virtually all of their procedures as if they were actually launching. This includes evacuating not just the launch site, but the village and production sites as well. Also, unlike typical cryo-testing, actual propellant is used, with more than 10 million pounds of it topping off the vehicles before mission control stops the countdown just prior to ignition. From the outside, everything appeared to go very smoothly. With the first wet dress completed, SpaceX moved Ship 24's transport stand back to the tower as they looked to the next round of tests. On Wednesday afternoon, the ship was lifted free of the booster and placed back onto its stand as part of preparations for the next booster static fire, which should include all 33 engines. At the build site, Ship 22's nose cone rolled out of high bay, indicating that the vehicle had now been chopped into more easily scrappable pieces. Thursday, Ship 24 was rolled to the rocket garden, likely just as a secure holding area for Booster 7's next static fire, and possibly for final flight preparations as well. Shortly after noon, a Raptor was spotted being transported to the launch site, likely to be swapped with one of Booster 7's engines before the static fire. Later, crews were spotted adding steel plates to the side of the base of the tower as blast shielding for the drawworks, hoist, and other equipment. Meanwhile, crews performed maintenance on SpaceX's LR-11000, which was laid down the day before, likely to help protect it during the coming static fire testing. Switching over to Florida, on Saturday, Doug returned to Port Canaveral with the fairing halves from the recent GPS launch for the U.S. Space Force. Early the next morning, Crosby Skipper towed Just Read the Instructions out to sea in support of the Starlink 5-2 launch. That evening, the barge that was recently loaded with GSE equipment from the LC-39A was spotted being towed out of Port Canaveral on its way to Brownsville. On Monday morning, Bob returned to Port Canaveral following its lengthy mission to successfully recover both of the fairing halves from the USS F-67 launch. Several hours later, Bob was spotted heading out to sea to join Just Read the Instructions and Crosby Skipper in supporting the Starlink 5-2 mission. Tuesday, the portside crane lifted Falcon 9 booster B-1077 from the deck of a short follow Gravitas and placed it on the dock for processing. Later, at Launch Complex 39A, the LR-11350 crane lifted the now-assembled chopsticks free from the jig and rotated them in position against the Starship launch tower for installation. And finally for this week, Early Thursday morning, Booster B-1067 lit up the sky as it sent up 54 Starlink satellites to orbit, a Falcon 9 record for mass to orbit. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.